there's going to be a woman that comes in your life one day, right? And you want to make sure you, know, you get married. To, I mean, are you getting married to later on get divorced or one and done? No, you're not following my route, right? You're not having a, a starter wife. A starter wife? A, a, pra <laughs> a practice round? Practice round. A practice round? My apologies. Pra practice grief? My apologies. Yeah, I don't tell, tell me about it, bro. It's just tell me about it. It cost me a lot of money. cost me a lot of time and money. It took my entire 30s to pay back the mistakes in my 20s. So the goal? The goal is one and done. And, and that's the thing, Matt. I, there, there's beauty to having a belief in a higher being, a.k.a. God. There's beauty to that. Because the moment you become rooted in God, you start to have foundational uh, value, uh, foundational principles and values that you, that you go with on how to approach a specific relationship. If you're good at communicating with God, you're going to be great at communicating in your relationship. If you're good at respecting the time that you spend with God and creating time to spend time with God, although you have a very busy schedule, you're going to create the same space and that same time for your partner. Yeah. If you follow, if you follow the laws that God has for us, and you are able to love your partner the way God loves us and shows us the grace and the mercy and the more intimacy we have with God, mm -hmm. our spirit tends to be more aligned to this identity of God, which one of the foundational things of life, are a nutrient that human beings need is love. And we, when we truly understand what love is, the actual love, unconditional love, agape love, whatever you want to call it, we tend to walk in love a lot harder, and we, turn, we, we tend to learn that love is not just a feeling or emotion, it's a verb, it's an action. So with walking with that ideology, too many people nowadays, they get their feelings hurt and they walk away. Too many people nowadays, they have one issue within the relationship, they walk away. Because they don't know or, how to process it. Exactly. They, 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 they don't know how to process it, they don't, have, they don't know how to have communication, they walk away from the entire relationship. And here's the thing, especially people nowadays, or even people who don't believe in something bigger than themselves, you have a problem in your relationship, Men tend to run to women. Women tend to run to men. Men tend to run to alcohol or substances. Women tend to run to, to, to attention online. They open the doors to attention from the opposite sex instead of running to God. I, I want to be able to be that man that if, I have, a, if, I, have a, if, I, right. if I have an issue with Come you on. as my wife, I'm going to run to God, not yeah. to women, not to alcohol, not to substances, not to something that's going to distract me and make the situa situation a lot worse. Nowadays, people don't understand the concept yeah. of what it is to have a relationship with God, so it's really hard to obtain a relationship with someone that's leading up to something powerful. Because when you understand the true understanding of what marriage is, because the, the point of marriage, man, is have children. That's one of the, that's one of the points. One of I the believe points the, that's the absolute point for getting married. If you don't have a disposition... To get married, to raise a family, what's the point of being married? Stay single. Go out there, exactly. Go yeah. out there, stay single. Yeah, one thousand percent. And I think to uh, to your point, lots of people today, because of the bad marital problems in the court system, dividing families and attack on American family. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't know what it's like to have a mom and dad around. One thousand percent. And if you don't have a faith in a higher power upstairs, yeah. where you actually have a relationship with a big man upstairs, it's hard for you to have any basis or perspective of what it's like to have a earthly relationship with a man or woman. Here on Earth, yeah. So if if, it, if for example, I think one of the most dangerous words that a lot of people use is this phrase: "I'm gonna do me." I'm gonna do me. <laughs> How do you know if doing you is the right thing to do? Based on what? Based on your 20 years of life, on your 30 years of life, on your 50 years of life? I'm gonna do me. To me, when people say "I'm gonna do me," in my opinion, that's fear. That's fear. One thousand percent. Because you know what? That's pride. It's fear. That's you know what? I don't want to just do me because I want to just put in my myself in position. I want to improve. I don't want to do me because me is flawed. The big man upstairs, he can perfect me. But me, right now, doing me, flawed, man, I'm going to do, do God. What would God do in this situation? Mm. What would my faith do in this big situation? And a lot of that, bro, freaking all, pour out that cup, take a bite of that humble pie. 1,000%. And say, I apologize, I'm sorry, I was wrong. What would you like to have? What would you like to be a resolution? Easy said and done, though. Mm -hmm. Easy said and done. So if, if you're out there in that type of situation, in a... If, well, first and foremost, if you got married and you didn't have a, you know, a fundamental faith base or spiritual base, you're already off. You're already off. And, and by the way, what was the biggest thing that people got uh, uh, up in arms about in terms of Super Bowl commercials this past Sunday? The Jesus commercials. The Jesus commercials. Best commercial I've seen. Man. Best commercials we've ever seen Best in Jesus, right? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. By the way, did you see the Jesus commercials? Jesus got some spotlight. The CEO of Hobby Lobby and his other investors spent 20, invested $20 million to make sure Jesus had two... Two commercials. And so why, why are people up in arms about it? Because it forced them to improve. It forced them that you can't just do you. can't do me. Because you are flawed. You're flawed. And if you think you're going to come into a marriage, you think you're going to be raising children based on that flawed premise without you willing to improve, 
you're setting yourself a failure. And I always believe that the children are improving me at mo most times. Most times, like, listen, I, we, we, okay, were you raised getting spanked? Me? Yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah, we were raised getting spanked. I, got sp <laughs> I cannot disclose that information on this podcast. I, got, I, got I my have names beat. to protect. <laughs> Did you get your ass beat when you, uh, <laughs> I'm using the uh, uh, King James version, the arse. Was, you, <laughs> was your ass beat growing up? Mine was. I still remember that damn leather belt with the Ooh. Yellowstone Park carving, and I had that, you know, on, on my behind. I still remember that. Did you ever get hit with a buckle side? <laughs> I've been here with an extension cord, with frying pants, with wooden spoons, belts, shoes, the 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 the, the Mexican flip flop. Yeah, of course, the chancleta. Okay, chancleta. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So you know, listen. Now, now I have my own kids, right? And I realized that was wrong because I'm raising my kids on them with fear. And by the way, pain is a great teacher, but not in fear. So I remember I took my twins. They were they were messing around, and I took the belt out. And I'm like, I can't believe I'm going to do this. I'm going to spank them. And then they said, you know. I hit the belt on a bed in the spring. You know, the, the springs just like kind of vibrated. Mm -hmm. And then, and then uh, Milani covers her sister so that dad's leg, you know, they're, they're maybe about seven or eight. Papi, don't hurt my steester. I'm like, forget this whole spanking shit. Man. I, can't, I can't do this. Uh, now, let me, ask you, let, me play, uh, let, let me ask you a question. That was to your, girl, to, to your daughters. Uh -huh. Was the way you raised your son differently than, the, yes. than you raised your daughters? Yes. I, I, he, Ruben got a pow pow. You got Papa. I can't remember the last time I did the daughter for sure, differently than than um, than uh, sons. Why do you think is Why do you think is different? Uh, it's important to raise the men, the boys differently that's, than the girls. That's my flaw. I don't. You know, for me, you know, not, not for example, you know, Jojo, our twelve year old. I can't remember the last time I spanked him. You know, Jordan. He's three years old. You know, he's you know he's he's getting big. Of course, a toddler needs to be uh, corrected. But I can't remember just this this. Just going out and just the way I was beat down, the way I was uh, punished as a kid. I remember a, a Chicago Cubs helmet I had. Mm. And let, make a long story short, the Chicago Cubs batting helmet was cracked. <laughs> so, so, listen, if, if, if you're in a situation where you have to express yourself that way, that's, that's where you already know you need to improve. And instead of you trying to perfect yourself, you, this is the hardest thing to do because men don't talk to other fathers, hey, how do you discipline your kids? Mm. That's where the big man upstairs comes along. That's where listening to their the right content is going to help you out. Reading the right books is going to help you out. Uh, I remember uh, reading this book, um, Wild at Heart. It talked about, you know, young boys just need to be out there. So instead of trying to discipline my kids the way I thought I, I needed to discipline my sons, let them, let them roam. Let them do the thing, right? Let them run wild because they're wild at heart. That is their nature. That is their God's design. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.